Hello, this is John with John Bird's Fine Art. I'm going to show you today how to make silicone block molds. This is part one out of a two-part video. This is a casting of my son's foot, my daughter's hand, and another casting there of my son's hand. So I made these using a product called Algisafe. This is from a company called Smooth On. I'll put a link in the description if you're interested in purchasing it. So one to one ratio, you mix with water, you can make a disposable one use mold. You can cast plaster in that mold or other various materials. So to approach mold making, I find that we want to find the path of least resistance. You want to pull the mold apart at opposing apexes. If you make the mold pull apart a little higher than those apexes, you're going to create hooks right here. And that makes one side come off easily, but the second side will get caught and uh, very difficult to take apart, if not impossible. So you want to make sure you work from opposite ends. I'll give you a technique on how to do that. So if we are going to make a mold of a light bulb, for example, we could part it across the top like that and across the bottom, but then you would definitely have to use a rubber jacket on the bottom. And there's a chance that, you know, there's more grabbing, more surface area like that for the one half of the mold. So there's a better way to do it, actually. Uh, you would lay that light bulb down on its side. So when you lay the light bulb down on its side, you are going to uh, create a much simpler mold. It's easier to pull apart and you don't run any risk. You could even do this with a two-part plaster mold because you don't get caught up in the threads of the light bulb that way. So finding the path of least resistance is really the MO for making a simple two-part mold. And now with these hands, it's a little more difficult because they're so complex in nature. So the best way to do it is gonna go from the uh, top of the wrist bone there, all the way over the knuckles and then underneath on the bottom side. You don't wanna cut over the front because that just wouldn't um, I wouldn't be doing you any favors there. So if I draw a line on the bottom and I have my little lines notched on the bottom of the hand, I know where to line it up. But you can see here with the steel tool, I'm finding the highest points on the casting. And I can just put little dots. And those highest points are of course those opposing apexes. So you can see I have that black notch on the bottom right there and both sides and I can just line it up with that line so I keep my points consistent. Now one of the things I'm up against is going over these finger dips and I would make a mess of it if I would just go straight across from the index finger to the thumb so I'm going to go around it and that would be acceptable. Okay, So we want to make sure that that top mold can pull off easily and that when it's flipped over, the bottom half of that mold can pull off easily. And it should very well. Now, where I had to go around those creases in the hand, it's gonna create a little bit of a dip, but we should be able to easily, especially with silicone, just flex it free from the final casting. So you can see here, where I connect those dots, I'll have a parting line to work with as I start to uh, shore up the clay. Create my parting line. Okay. So look it over really well and make sure that you've uh, your decision is final because once you've made that decision, there's no backing out. Okay. All right. So we just connect the dots. And we're going to go over here. And of course, this line is just the reference line for the clay. So it doesn't need to be very tight. You know, it's just a general guideline. There you can see where I'm flexing. Make sure that's how that's going to come off. The other side will come off. Now this foot is a little more complex because the hand, for example, the pore spout can be through the wrist and uh, the, the foot here, sometimes you just 
dealing with what you got to deal with. But we are going to cut across the toes, the tops of the toes, and that mild gap may assist in letting air out. Uh, so I'm going to go to the highest point of the foot. And I don't really know where I'm going to go. So I can just connect the line across the top. And that gives me a good reference point there is where to make the connecting line across the foot. So that bottom half of the foot should come off nicely. And then the top half of the foot, of course, will come off nicely as well. So there we go. Now this is the most tedious, grueling part of the whole process. And this is where you're going to spend a good amount of your time. And it should be spent well because uh, this is where the rubber is going to meet the road, literally. So this is a two-part rubber mold that I made for a previous project, and this is what it's going to look like when it's done, essentially. Um, so we're going to build up the clay around the hand, and we're just going to keep going around it, around and around. And when you are pushing the clay up against the hand. Use a wooden uh, spatula tool or some type of wooden tool uh, because if you use a metal tool you are going to scratch that and that will appear in the final casting. So just use a wooden tool, take your time and if you can make downward motions instead of jabbing motions at your plaster cast. Okay? So this here is after it's all built up and uh, see if we can get this zoomed in. Here we go. And you can see how I built a hump there. If I build that hump on both sides, that'll be an opening in the rubber, the silicone, to uh, pour into. And we can cut that off the final casting, no problem. So that is my signature tool. I went ahead and made a mild key for it. And I wrote my son's name and the year. I used to put the uh, identification on a piece of tape and then I'd sink it underneath the surface of the rubber like I did in that orange piece. But I found that if you cast it into the uh, mold itself, uh, it's much more better. So I'm just using a uh, putty knife and I'm making perpendicular cuts straight down to the board. So when I put my walls up, it'll be perfect. And uh, of course, a straight edge to guide me along the way. Okay, and I use my straight edge to make sure that it's you know flat up against it, and it wasn't. So I went ahead and just whittled away a little more clay. Okay, now you can check all the sides of that straight edge to make sure that when your uh, walls go up, that they're going to be nice and straight. Okay, and another thing you want to consider as you are uh, putting up the cardboard is what height do you need to cut your cardboard walls? Well. Take another straight edge. Um, I use the fettling knife there across the highest point on the hand to measure the height on that ruler. And you want to go about another half inch to three quarters of an inch higher than your highest point on the mold. That'll give you room to put more silicone and uh, you know room to spare. And uh, here we go. So I got the cardboard pieces. This is a double corrugated cardboard. And it's nice, sturdy, rigid stuff. Make sure you have a nice straight edge on those walls. We're going to pinwheel it together. So make sure that it's square with the one side. So that as you lap around, everything's going to be true. The one side can hang over and that's fine. So I just take one uh, piece of the wall and really hang it over so I know exactly how to make it flush. And just glue that one piece there like that overhangs that's great that's the pinwheel effect going on so if you have t-pins you can run t-pins through these pieces like this and that'll hold your walls very well makes it nice and rigid as you run the hot glue and try to do this in one continuous bead the hot glue because when you stop and go stop and go you create opportunities for the silicone to leak so if you just lay one continuous bead of hot glue, um, you stand a much better chance of having a watertight mold, silicone tight mold. And run the beads up the side, don't forget to do that. 
I put a little bead on top to hold the walls together. Those beads cool faster than the actual dragging of the hot glue across the bottom. So I'm just gonna hold that there for a second until that cools. I didn't have any T-pins close by when I did this, so this is one method. Run the hot glue up the wall. Of course, we're on that last side. And uh, make sure that you go around the complete perimeter of the bottom with the hot glue around the corners like that. Just want to make sure that there's no opportunity for the silicone to leak, because if it finds its way through, it will leak. Okay, so this is wrapping it up. Uh, this is pretty much prepped. We can hit it with some universal mold, mold release from Smooth On. I'll list that in the description too. You want to get that and uh, we can pour silicone in the next video. So stick around, check it out. Please hit like, subscribe, and uh, get the notifications for the next video. Hit that bell. Thank you.